Welcome to the first session at Local Group Drupal Week. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, my name's Tim, I'm the Commons Leader at Local Group Drupal, and I will be hosting today's session. Um, so this session is all about uh, the Local Group Drupal journey, um, and we're gonna, I'm going to be joined by Finn, Maria, and Will, uh, who've all been sort of central to that. Um, thank you to them for running and helping promote the session today. Uh, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank our event sponsor, Home Connections. Uh, Home Connections uh, is uh, led and owned by local authorities and housing associations and is a social purpose company supporting the fairer housing sector. Uh, should also say a massive thank you to all our um, subscribing councils and suppliers uh, who've helped put on this week and have uh, will be making contributions uh, throughout the week and, and maybe in this session as well. So it says in my notes, I'm now going to hand you over to someone who will be running this session. But of course, that is me. So I'm not going to hand you over to anyone. Um, so we're joined today by three people central to the local GovDrupal journey, the directors of Open Digital Cooperative. And if you don't know what Open Digital Cooperative is yet, uh, we're going to return to that shortly. Um, so the three people are Maria Young. Do you want to give a wave, Maria, uh, from Agile Collective, who is our accessibility champion and done lots of work on the front end of our site. Um, also by Finn from Open Code, who is our tech lead. And Hello. Will. Ah, thank you, Finn. And Will, who's our co-founder and project and product lead. So welcome to all three of you. Uh, and thanks very much for joining us. So this session is 45 minutes long uh, and it's going to be in three stages and it's going to look at the three stages of development of the project. So we'll start off with the big idea. Uh, we'll then take a look at the discovery alpha and beta phases with Finn uh, before having a look at microsites and flying solo, which is the mission name of the mission patch. Uh, and that's where it's going to, Maria's going to kick us off with that. Uh, and then we're going to have a bit of a chat about what the future might hold. If you've got any questions, please do put them in the chat and we'll have a look at that. Um, so it's going to be a bit of a it's going to be a bit of a chat. So there's no presentations or anything like that. Uh, and Will, we're going to start with you. Hello, Will. Hi. This is a bit overwhelming. Um, is it? And it's, it is a little in that. I mean, there's so many really great people here that have been on the journey with us and it's when we started and we'll talk about in a second how we started this is not what I expected at all I mean we're all, we're obviously on to something aren't we you know collabor collaboration sharing and pooling our resources and best practice is a thing you know that we're we're all benefiting from so thank you all for coming and, and listening slightly nervous as well <laughs> That's okay. I'm nervous as well, as you might be able this to This is our first one as well. This is our it first is. one of these. So um the first session of the first uh local group Drupal week. So yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um so Will, do you want to explain briefly, and it will have to be briefly, because we've only got yeah. 45 minutes, how how the project came about. What was the what was the big idea? I think I think a lot of it was born of frustration. You know, you so I'm I'm a contractor for the most part, been for a long time in the government digital service, and then now at six councils, and and just ending up doing the same thing. Um, you know, you either go and buy something off the shelf that doesn't really work, or you build something just for you and not for anybody else. And there's no there's no sense that other people outside, or there hasn't been any sense that people outside might be doing the same things or want to do the same things. And I got to trying to think what year it was 2017 something like that 2018 at Brighton which is a which is a, a sort of very sort of Drupal heavy house they really love Drupal and and we built a, a simple sort of CMS based on Drupal which ultimately became local of Drupal and we were thinking well why can't you know why can't we talk to other people about this and why can't we share with them in the building that we were in there was a there was a health authority that was grappling with the same questions that we were and we, they were behind a locked door and we were not allowed to speak to them and they were not allowed to speak to us. I mean, it was it was just bonkers, really. And and I think it's a few a few people sort of pushed, 
push this to become a reality. I'm going to say thank you. I think the first person is is a developer who's, who's not really part of the work anymore. His name's Alec Miggle. He was basically the supplier to Brighton. And there's a blog post where he talks about he mowed a council's lawn at some point and you can go and read it anyway. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it justice, but it's like, if we can do things for other councils, if we can share with other councils, like mowing your lawn, why can't we share code? Why can't we get together? And it was very much him saying, look, well, let's open source this. Let's open source this. That kind of, that kind of reignited my passion for it. And then my, my boss is in Brighton. So Ali, Ali Rigby, uh, Annie Heath uh, is now at Birmingham. And then in Croydon, people from that side basically saying, look, we want to reuse this, we want to share. So that's Neil Williams. Annie, again, she was working there. Dave Briggs, who I'm sure you've heard of. It's it's a meeting of minds and it's people saying, actually, we don't just need to do the thing that we're always doing, which is build for ourselves. We can actually look a little bit outside our work and start thinking about what other people are doing you know, as well. And that's still happening. You know, that's happening every day at local group Drupal. I can't talk about this all day. I don't suppose any of those people <laughs> that you've just mentioned are here, are they? Because I can see a I Dave. I can see a Dave B. Is that Dave Briggs? Maybe he it might be you. Dave Briggs. Yeah, it might be Dave Briggs. He could wave if it is. If that's not putting him on the spot too much. Or maybe it isn't him. It's just an absolute coincidence. Who no, knows? It might be. Yeah, it's, it might it's be. David B. So that's not Dave B. I oh, okay. So, yeah, All right. Well, it was, worth the, it, was, it was worth a try. It was worth a try. And so it's set, it's set up almost um, kind of by chance by two because of basically because of a great group of people sort of working together and moving that from one council to another. Yeah. So how did you how did you build on that and move it to the next stage where it's it's gone from two councils collaborating to being a to being a, a thing that was funded. Um, I mean, I think this is where Finn comes in as well. But, but I mean, but Croydon were, were signatories of the local dig, dig, uh, I can't say it, digital declaration, same as a lot of the folks here. And we were looking for a for a project that fit the bill. And and I so happened to be working on on the on the website there as a sort of delivery manager. And we thought, well. We've got to we've got to get a website done. We've got to meet this commitment, and also we know that Brighton's got a load of code that we can use. And because I just worked on it, I worked on it sort of six months previously. And it's like, well, why can't we pick up the phone and ask them if we can have this code? Um, and that's and that's basically what we did. I mean, there was a, there was a little bit of resistance at the start, you know, on both sides. It's well, we're special, kind of what Croydon was saying, and Brighton was saying, well, we just paid for this. And should we not just be selling it or something like that? But I think people quickly realise that actually we're not that special. We we have our own sort of sort of interests and 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 needs, but we can talk about that and make some common needs from them. And also, you know, this code is open source and it's paid for with public money. So why would we sell it? I guess we could, but actually, what we really should be doing, we've got the benefit as a council. Maybe we should give it. Um. And and you know that that kind of brought this thing to, together, and from then we were able to happily the local digital fund the DLOOK fund came along, and we were able to submit a good bid to that. They're looking for councils who they're already collaborating. Really, I'm sure a lot of you have already filed bids. If you can show a bit of momentum, you know the people are interested in this, and like more and more people are interested in in this, which is what we're able to do. Then they look on those sorts of bids very favourably. I mean, obviously we, we're we're self-sustaining now, so we're not we're not eligible for more money. But at the time, you know, we were able to show more and more councils are interested. More code is being shared, more value is being generated, more money is being saved, and that's what they want to hear. So you know, you've all done all of you have done us a massive favour. You know, it's everybody getting on board and saying, "I'll have a piece of this. I'll share something. I'll get involved." That's how these things grow. You know, if we got to eight councils and everybody else said, oh, I'm not interested, we would have stopped. So it's every new council joining and showing a commitment makes this a stronger thing. And, you know, I'm very grateful. We're all very grateful to you for, for doing that. And I think, I think Finn, just bringing you in, I think this is the sort of time when you sort of heard about the project when when Will was going to DLOC. How, how did you hear about the project and what sort of first excited you about it 
Thanks, Tim. Yeah, um, so this was, I think, late 2019, maybe early 2020, and uh, I was still working at Agile Collective at that point. Um, and I think it was a tweet from uh, Neil Lawrence, who was a, a friend and um, uh, um, sort of Drupal uh, acquaintance from um, uh, Oxford City Council previously. And I'm not sure if he'd moved away by that point, but he kind of spotted, you know, keeps his uh, ear to the ground and 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 spotted this opportunity that um, I think maybe knew Will. And, um, uh, but yeah, I think there was a tweet that said you should really look at this, and it was a it was the application. Um, sorry, no, the procurement that that Croydon had um, uh, put out, funded by the local digital fund, um, which I've just put a link there in the in the chat in case anyone doesn't know about that. Um, and uh, yeah, it was for this uh, you know the the discovery phase to see if this is actually possible. Is it possible for two councils to start sharing Drupal code? Uh, to which, of course, Agile Collective was a long term Drupal supplier, uh, very you know uh, very keyed into Drupal and the open source community. And we thought, yes, this makes a lot of sense. Uh, and the whole kind of collaboration ethos within Agile Collective, we're a worker co-op. Um, I say we, I'm no longer there, but uh, it's been a worker co-op since 2011. And uh, so that spirit of collaboration was strong there. So it just started linking together um, some of the you know, key things that we we believed in as a, as, um, as, a, as a group of people working with Drupal. So it sounded great. We went for it. Um, we won the procurement to deliver um, the technical part of the discovery phase alongside, I think, um, BXW who were doing the user research, but, um, and we got stuck in, um, and it was lucky that we did, cause this was just before lockdown. I think we had one meeting, uh, in person in London, uh, to kick off the project before, uh, uh, the, the shutters came down and everybody went fully remote, which of course was a bit of a game changer. Um, so yeah, I think that was early, early 2020. Um, uh and yeah we got we, we, we got stuck in for a few months and i think that was like a six months discovery phase uh looking at the code from brighton liaising between developers and product people at brighton and croydon trying to convince everybody that actually we could do this as an open source collaboration as a drupal distribution um you know exploring the challenges there and and um overcoming some some resistances will already kind of hinted at um, so i mean the, the i guess the the code if you like that you in, inherited when you first joined the project i guess that's sort of evolved over the period between discovery and the and, and what we what we see now is local good triple can you talk about the way that the the platforms evolved for us a little bit yeah so the the the, the code um base at brighton very kindly just like you know shared shared their code base shared their repositories so we could see all of their um, this is Drupal 8, I think, at the time. So, you know, configuration plus custom code and custom theme. Um, and a lot of it was reusable, perhaps, like, but still named and sort of developed with Brighton specific uh, focus. Um, so, the alpha phase, which was a subsequent tranche of funding from um, the local digital fund, uh, was to take that code and make it more generic, turn it into a Drupal distribution that was labeled local gov Drupal rather than BHCC uh, and and start the process of, of you know inspecting the the configuration and development choices and making sure that this is you know fit for purpose for uh, at least two councils at the time Croydon and Brighton being the the key councils but I think we had four councils maybe at that point or six I forget Will I um, think there was eight there was eight in the first was there round yeah so we had although Ox and so, yeah so Oxford wanted so Neil wanted to but he couldn't so mm -hmm. he was just like, I'll observe you. So maybe it was seven, okay. but it was there were eight okay. named councils in that in that bid. So, but then we had strong developer resource from from uh, Andy and friends at Brighton and Adnan and friends at Croydon, and so so you know key kind of technical people helping um, you know work alongside the the agile collective team to um, refactor the code and turn it into a generic Drupal distribution uh, ready for uh, use at, at Croydon and and at other other councils. Um, so I think we then went through an alpha phase, a beta phase. Um, the alpha phase kind of getting us to the point where it was reusable. And, and then the beta phase, I think, adding additional features, mainly sort of subsites and extending the kind of core information architecture of services to, to um, you know, events, news, additional content types, and, and really kind of uh, building it out. And so discovery, six months, alpha, maybe best part of a year, and then beta another year. Is that about right, Will? Um, and yeah, so then that kind of takes us up to, towards the, the um, I'm not sure how many, we know how many councils we had at that point um, and how many sites launched, but I think Croydon, actually I think Lambeth might have been the first council to actually launch a site on on it other than, you know, sort of after we developed the code. Um, 
as our collective was working with Lambus Council at the time and um, uh, did an early release and then maybe Croydon. Um, and then, yeah, fast it was really, now. it was, it was really fast, wasn't it? It's, we, I, I remember us working on trying to get to a launch at Croydon with that new code. And, and Lambeth basically came and just went, oh, we'll just do it in two months. And they did it. And I think it was just before Christmas and ours was in the new year. And we're like, oh, mm-hmm. so we didn't even get, we didn't get, I did like the first launch out of it. But, you know, but, that's, it, was that's being, what it's but it was being used. It was being used. That was the main thing. So, um, Absolutely. yeah. Um, so, yeah, then again, you know, I think, uh, I mean, Will and, and Croydon have, was great at, at going to the local digital fund and, and making the argument for, getting some more money to invest in this because it is going to save uh, local authorities money and the public sector money in the long run. So it makes sense to invest in supporting the collaboration uh, and then putting those out as open procurements, uh, open tenders through, I think it was DOS5, Digital Outcomes and Services, maybe at the time, um, which Agile Collective were successful a number of times in in, in, in winning the, the work and continuing to, to keep the band together and, and, and deliver the, the, the beta phase um, and then on to microsites which perhaps is the next part of the story it is i was, I, I, I was gonna like, say i'm like i'm letting my i'm letting my cat stay here because he's on a mission patch from that period so this basically what it this is what it felt like all of those meetings it's you know we've got hats on and cats come in and lots of other things but it was it was super productive and and i interrupted you completely but i just thought i'd explain what he's doing it's all right. Finn had actually done an incredible segue into the next part of the uh, into the next into the next part of the session. Maria, microsites. You were kind of instrumental in that. With I think possibly a few other people who were on the on the call. Um, how did that go? How was the process of of building the microsites? How was that different from from what had gone before? Um, well, we got a we got a, a team a team together, including Eeks and Mark. I'm not sure if he's on the team Mark, uh, on the call from uh, Anatech. Uh, so we built actually in a, a whole other product for for microsites. I don't know if how familiar people are w- with it, which was meeting like the next most important needs that the councils had told us that they they had after their main site to to be able to support or manage. Uh, up to hundreds of, of uh, at that point, like uh, individual sites all over the place that were all becoming unloved and inaccessible and and whatever. Uh, how how was it different? It was a huge project. It was uh, yeah, really uh, technically very complex. Um, there was a lot of yeah, a lot of technical. Uh, uh, problems, <laughs> complexities <laughs> to overcome, um, which uh, Eeks could give you uh, lots of information about if you if you care to care to know. Uh, partly, like just getting um, a lot of the the technical uh, well groups in Drupal wasn't wasn't quite as ready as we needed it to be. Um, so we had to do a lot of um, committing to to the upstream projects to be able to get it ready for for the alpha um but we we developed a really interesting a really interesting product and you know i worked with mark and uh and richard developing the front end and the so you can you can spin up lots of separate sites they can all have their own look and feel they've all got they they can all have their own content team but we we created a kind of point and click uh, your way to a front end uh, front end theme uh, interface that we're we're really proud of. Um, it was a lot of a really interesting project and yeah, uh, something that I think is really powerful. Um, do you, right. what do you want to know about it, Tim? <laughs> right now, I don't know. Well, we I just wanted to talk about it and I highlight yeah. the work that the work that you guys have done. Well, I think the other thing that. that we we did all all along the way that that was really interesting was like we we always have had um uh you know we agile collective and uh, were leading leading the the work but we had lots of councils uh who were who were telling us what to do like we had a working group of of, of councils who were informing us the priorities what we needed to do and also did a lot of user testing with us along the way um which which you know was really yeah essential basically to to be able to to make sure that we we're building something that that can be used yeah and i think we've got a few quite a few microsites out there now i'm not quite sure how many 
I think there's about five at the moment, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe, maybe more, but I know there's a lot more being built. I guess the other thing that was that was kind of happening at the same time as building microsites was um local gov Drupal changing from a funded project into its into its own entity uh yeah. and becoming into a becoming a cooperative. How did can you explain to us a bit about that that sort of that process that was happening in tandem? Um I yes I can I can but I will I, I ask for for fact fact checking from Will and Finn on this. <laughs> uh, but yes, basically the uh, the the funding from from the local digital fund we knew we always knew it was going to be uh, uh, it was going to run out. So we started exploring ways to to continue to fund and develop and support the the open source project. Um, and a lot of thought went into that, and a lot of uh, we, you know, looked at a lot of different models. Um, as, as Finn said, like Agile Collective uh, is a is a co cooperative, as as is uh, your company, Tim. We've got a lot of uh, love for cooperatives, um, and so that was really a, an obvious model for us to explore. Um, I I feel quite quite strongly that open source and co the co-op model basically go hand in hand. Um, and if you want to discuss that, then come to the pub with me sometime. Um, but uh, yeah, so it was a, it was an obvious model. We were also took a lot of ins inspiration from the Drupal Association, you know, but who who basically exist to um, they 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 take uh, they they have members, they take money that that basically goes into supporting the the open source project, both in terms of the code and the community around it. So we looked we looked at those and. Um, and talked to a lot of the, the stakeholders around the councils and, and suppliers and landed on the idea of a multi-stakeholder, not-for-profit multi-stakeholder cooperative um, that that basically um, offers membership, except we use the word uh, subscribership because uh, mm -hmm. membership is means something else in a cooperative. So you can, can become a subscriber to show your support to the project and help fund its um, its future development. That's great. If I missed any essential piece of information there. I think, I think it's also worth it's it's worth a shout out to the co. It's a bit of a mouthful. C C I N is the acronym. It's the Cooperative Councils Innovation Network, of which some of you might be members already. It's a it's a really really sort of nice um, innovative group. I think there's about thirty councils all together, and they recently had their their get together in I think it was in Sunderland, and, we, and some of us went to that. Um, it's it's the same idea it's like how do we get together as a group of councils and 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 put money in a pot and do interesting work that benefits all of us um and they they had pretty much a kind of sort of charging model and things ready to go and they were they were very giving with their time you know this is how we do it this is what's worked this is not what what's not worked and we were able to sort of try that out sort of very early on and see whether it it fitted and and it almost entirely does so a lot of what they, one of their, their pioneering workers has sort of gone into what we're doing. So we're very grateful to them. And Ben, with for, for what what from you with sort of learnings from that that process? Is there anything that sort of stands out? Um, I think the the suppliers who were involved at that point were all really supportive, and so the early, you know, the kind of technical group. Um, the, the kind of facilitate and and and, and lead uh, within local gov Drupal included lots of developers and people from Drupal agencies and suppliers who are already familiar with the kind of like Drupal Association model, I guess, and already kind of familiar with like open source as a as a thing that needs to, to be supported, um, and can see that actually you know supporting it would help to grow the grow the sort of size of of the I guess the market of local gov Drupal within um, within in in the UK and, and Ireland, and so. Um, yeah, there was a meeting of like sort of seven or eight suppliers on a call, sort of just a quick round, like, you know, would you all be willing to put in, say, about £10,000 each in order to, you know, sort of like commit to paying that subscription fee next year if, if we set this thing up? And that really gave us a leg up because suppliers can say yes or no on the point at that point, whereas councils need to go and discuss it. And, you know, there's like decision making processes. So I think really the suppliers were were you know great at that point and helped to give us a, a leg up and some sort of um, reassurance that we'd have some money in the pot to uh, have some core funding for for the development and uh, the maintenance of the community. So that, you know, so thanks to all those people who who helped to kick that off. Um, and then 
going forward you know the kind of um the the the, the meeting of of uh we had an away day where we're sort of like we're sort of formalizing the, the you know sort of the approving the fact that we're going to set up a company which includes sub suppliers and councils um by which time i think we've had nods from quite a few councils that they would be up for putting some script subscription money in, in in the pot as well and um yeah really sort of helped help to get us going so thanks to all. and i, th I think at that meeting well. yeah yeah absolutely and i think at that meeting we decided together on the name open digital cooperative didn't we um and no, i think was... we they went to we put it we, we whittled it down to three tim and then we put oh, it we, we did a very democratic <laughs> process on slack <laughs> yeah and we so it was, it was from it was from that and it, someone's just put in the in the chat it was almost a year ago to the day that we had that we had that meeting which is interesting isn't it so we we decided between us open digital cooperative was there a reason that it's Open Digital Cooperative is the name of the organisation and not Local Good Drupal? So, we, yes. Orphan. Oh, sorry. Or Maria. <laughs> you go, go Finn. Uh, well, the, there's feeling and, you know, uh, opinions within the community that this is not necessarily just limited to Drupal, that as councils and uh, public sector in the UK, we could be sharing open source collaborating on, on open source code to do other things and other, other bits of software. There's an awful lot of software that councils spend money on. Um, not all of it is amazing and a lot of it could probably be improved. So having a, you know, a, a company, a fiscal vehicle to, to support, um, yeah, why limit it to Drupal basically was, was one thing. And then similarly, why limit it to local gov? I think was uh, another uh, sentiment within the the, uh, the the people involved in those discussions. Um, some thinking about health service maybe or uh schools or other public sector um opportunities to, to collaborate on, on yeah improving software for people who use it like us and so yeah. the people of, of, of the whatever the citizens or yeah people of the world um and so and so you know just just on that thought you know where the co-op as a whole where where do where do you guys see it sort of heading over the next, I don't know, two or two or three years. Will, let's let's start with you as we've segued nicely into part three. Um, and do if you've got right. questions, do put them in the do put them in the chat. Yeah. We'll have some time for questions in a minute. Um I I think we're entering a really interesting kind of point. So obviously we've got renewals next year. So you know hopefully people who've paid will continue to pay because that is obviously essential to keeping this core stuff rolling. But what I think we're seeing is that is people not just saying they've got it, actually really getting it. So I'm just thinking about all the pull requests that have gone in, gone in over the last couple of months or about to go in. So all the Drupal 10 work that we largely funded as a core team, but lots of people were involved with. You know, so we as a group of councils and suppliers, we put money in a pot and we did the upgrade for everybody, and loads of people got involved and added code and pull requests and tested. And that just shows that this works because individually that would that would cost each of us a, a fortune. But on top of that, we've got, um, oh, can I remember them all? We, uh, we, we're we doing some co-funded work with Cumbria on elections. That's happening. We've got a load of stuff that Essex is contributing around access control. You know, that's happening right now. We've got HTML publications coming that Anatech and Chipkin and so on have been working on. Loads and loads of really interesting stuff. We, as a core team, we don't have oversight all of all of this. That's kind of not the point. You know, it's people see this as their product and they can add. So I think that will speed up in the next sort of six to 12 months as more people mature on the platform and realise there's things that they want to do. I'd love to have a crack at booking and payment because I think that's the next biggest thing. And I wrote with D-Look bid for it or started one and they went, oh, you're not having any more money. So it's like, you know, we've had enough. Um so I think it's I think the, the the kind of maximizing effect of of collaboration will happen in the next twelve months if we all stay the course, and I think beyond that maybe others will talk about this is well what what next what after that because we know this is working, so I think maybe more partnerships with with suppliers that we're we're starting to understand you know spaces we're never going to go into but suppliers who are actually selling software but we can do that that have the same kind of attitude towards this as us. 
So we're looking for suppliers of that kind to really, you know, get sort of collaborative working more deeply embedded within councils. And then beyond that, well, what sectors, what countries, you know, where, where could we go? We've had a lot of interest from, from other places about this and other sectors about this. And I think if you get more of that involved, it, you know, it's, it doesn't dilute the product, it actually makes it better. You know, it's more voices, more understanding of what the common needs we're trying to achieve. And our decision-making model isn't, it's it's around consent, it's not consensus. This isn't a, you know, it's not all designed by committee. It's like we're all chipping in and then we work out what flies, we try it, we push on in that way. I think that really supports what we're trying to do as well. So I've talked enough. Somebody, maybe Finn, do you have thoughts? I, I just just on the kind of features of local gov Drupal's front, I think yeah, other things that publications is is local gov publications is, is looking really good. And I think there's yeah, there's an alpha release right now. There's a talk on that later this week. Um, check that out. Sort of you know, getting rid of PDFs and having things in HTML and accessible formats. Um, uh, also local gov outposts. So integration with other systems that have been funded by the, the local digital fund. Outposts is about services and co collecting services in a different system which then exposes it to an API which Drupal can consume so um yeah t linking up systems together so there's yeah there's lots of bits of interesting work already in flight and, and it will continue to improve uh local of Drupal as a, as a product and its interactivity with other things um I was just also thinking about like uh the the company the co-op uh, open digital co-op as well and where that might be going and one thing that's very exciting right now is we're about to have our first AGM at which uh, the three of us as interim directors will step down and we have a, an open and democratic vote of all of the members to nominate and vote for uh, a, a new board, um, which will be comprised of suppliers and councils. And so that is super exciting to sort of be walking the walk of the democratic election process and actually getting to a stage where we've got a, a, a sort of um, official and, and transparent and elected um, representative board. Um, so that is super exciting. That will set us in good stead for the next year, I think, um, on that front, uh, to uh, continue absolutely. to support. Absolutely. No, I'm looking forward to, to the AGM. Has anyone ever looked forward to an AGM? I'm not sure, but I am. Um, Maria, do you have anything anything to add on the future of um, Open Digital Cooperative or or Local Good Drupal as a product project? Uh, no, they, they, they just said all of the things I, th I was about to say, I think, but... Um... Uh, yeah, I mean, just to reiterate that last point, we were we were kind of the three of us were nominated by our peers to to be interim directors, and we're really we're really keen. I'm certainly very keen to um to hand hand that over to to the the next uh ground uh the next board of directors, and we've done a you know it's been a quite a slog to get to the point where where we are we've got a company that's up and running and we had to design all sorts of things uh that were good enough for now um like a procurement process and you know how to run the finances you know all of these things um and so they can only only get better and more open and transparent and and you know work towards you know concentrate on developing the developing the products um yeah well you know, on behalf of the the membership and the wider project, thanks to the three three of you for all the amazing work you've done over the over the past year, and it is a year, isn't it? As we've said earlier, um, are there any questions now or comments? Anything that anyone would like to ask or to say uh, based on anything we have just heard, or perhaps something completely different? If you use your reactions, you can raise your hand or you can type it in the chat. Um, otherwise, it'll be me ad libbing for the next. So there's, a, there's a couple from Chandi, one earlier, just on the uh, maybe it's specific to microsites, I think, when Maria, you're talking about microsites, um, uh, saying, is there anything you'd like to share around the challenges and wins using sharing, adapting different components and tweaking them for each use case? Um, so I think this was in relation to microsites. Sure, you can answer that one too, Finn, I'm sure. Um, I mean, we did reuse it. We reused uh, as many of the features from the main. So they are two just separate standalone distributions, local gov Drupal and microsites. Another reason we couldn't call it local gov Drupal is because it's already confusing having two products 
uh, called Local Gov Drupal, we can have also have a company called Local Gov Drupal. Uh, so Local Gov Drupal microsites uh, reused a, a lot of the, the features from and extended a lot of the features from Local Gov Drupal, which was obviously a huge win to be able to build on that. And also make sure that anything we built for microsites was also back back portable or portable over to the main distribution. But obviously the, the, the one of the challenges when you're developing any distribution like this is to make sure that any any new feature that we build uh, doesn't break any other any existing sites or functionality that people have already got going. So that's I mean that's basically always the, always the challenge uh, that we're looking at. Um, uh, uh, the other one is I mean, obviously making sure we're building something that is actually useful to people. Um, so uh, I'm hoping that we, we, we did do that. It's a really complicated system, the microsites one, and we are still like, I know it is quite confusing to use still. And so I think that's like the next phase is, is to try and help people like, like make that a bit, a bit easier. Um, so yeah, that is, is still a, a challenge that's out there. Um, Finn, have you got any other challenges or eeks, seeing as you're here too? Finn, do you want to come in? Um, specifically with microsites, um, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it is it, the complexity. I think is 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 yeah, like Maria mentions. I think you know, to, to improving, the, you know, to, trying to simplify it, which is essentially what we did, and we have simplified it massively from. You, what you could do with the components within Drupal, the various contrib modules that help to divide out content and users and functionality onto separate domains with separate content, but all in one big Drupal site, um, and make that sort of a, an easy user experience. Uh, as you say, Marie, we've got we've got further to go with that. I'm sure we will do this, uh, you know, going forward. Um, there's then the shifting landscape of the modules that we depend on in Drupal, a group module and uh, group permissions being one case in point, and uh, and domain module. And the fact that there's now a new group sites module, which kind of does what we're doing in microsites, but in a slightly different way. And so we might be looking to realign uh, the microsites distribution with um, the way that the contributed modules are going in the, in the Drupal world. And this is one of the, you know, the great things about open source, but also the stuff we need to keep an eye on and, and sometimes uh you know yeah continue to improve sometimes change the way that we, we do things um brilliant oh, thanks ben oh, sorry we've got another question some... from we've got, sorry, just, I... just got one more question from right. someone in the audience uh, we love the interface you have developed for microsites is there any best practice or guides for taking the microsite portion and using with a theme other than local gov uh, yes, uh, there is. Uh, you can you can write your own your own theme. There is a, a local gov uh, base local gov microsites base theme which you can which you can extend. I suggest um, that you go to Mark's talk later in in I think it's on Thursday. I don't know if Mark's here, but he's doing a talk specifically on microsites if you want to, to know specifically about um, that. But we do have, there is a bit of documentation on the doc site about uh, theming, theming, like developing an, a, a specific theme for uh, your microsite. Oh, thanks, Finn. Finn posted in the chat. Perfect. The um, GitHub repository for microsites. So there's some information in there that people can use. Thank you, Finn. Uh, Will, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Is there something no, that you'd right. like to add? Um, just to say on the using other themes in microsites and subsites, we're about to start some work in Essex about that. Um, and, and quite a lot of design work has been done. So I think that will look quite nice when it arrives and we'll definitely contribute that back. On the, on the earlier point about sort of using, sharing, reuse, I think the the, the Drupal ecosystem is incredible. I'm, I'm quite new to it still. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I've done, really done very much outside of this project. But the, the idea that you can say, I'm trying to do it, whatever, and you can have a conversation with, with developers who know their stuff, like, you know, a lot of the folks on this call, and they'll say, oh, this has been done in name of module already and the fact that there are so many components out there that we can reuse and tweak um you know it's a bit wordpress like but i think if anything it's a bit better than my experience is there you know you can pick these things up you can install them you can try them and it's really liberating so 
you know, embrace that. I think what we'll be doing a lot more of next year is trying to work out what else is in Drupal, in the Drupal world that maybe should be core to what we're doing. And we're already identifying things. Uh, Masquerade keeps getting talked about. I think we need to have that as an example. But I think there are other things. So if there are any, if there are any sort of core things to, in Drupal that we should have to just shout, and we'll we'll definitely take a look at them and add them. Um, but it's that flexibility is incredible, really. Thanks, Will. Thanks to Stella. She's she's posted Mark's um, session in the chat, so you can have a look at that and register if you've not already. Uh, have we got any other any other questions or comments from anybody? Anyone? Stella, would you like to say anything? We can see you there because you've you, Anatech have been part of this journey as well. Would you like to Would you like to say anything about your involvement? Um, I don't know what there is to say other than it's a fantastic community and we really enjoyed being, you know, participants and members of it. So it's the first time we've really had that close collaboration with councils, you know, like building a platform rather than just building a one-stop website. So, yeah, it's just been great community to be a part of. I have to say everyone is just fantastic to work with. And that is that is that is a that would be a fantastic place to uh to to finish the session, wouldn't it? So thanks for that, Stella. What a great what a great comment. Thank you very much. Um, so we we are about at time. We've got we've got a couple more minutes, so it's just enough time to do the outro, and then everyone can go and go and get their lunch. So uh, some thank yous. Obviously, thanks everyone for coming. It's a great it's a great turnout for the first session. Please do go to our Luma page and sign up uh, for as many sessions as you can throughout the week. There's some really interesting ones uh, going in, going on, should I say, uh, from Finn as well as Maria and uh, Will. And we've already talked about Mark's um, later in the week as well. So thanks to everyone for putting those on. Uh, should say thanks also to Aaron, who's helped set these, uh, set everything up this week. Um, so I hope hope you find this session enjoyable. I have to say thanks again to our sponsor, Home Connections, uh, and also uh, to everyone who's putting on sessions later in the week. Please do go and register. Thanks very much for joining us. And I'll see you all, hopefully, the next session is today at four o'clock. And that is with Maria. Maria, do you want to go on? We've got one minute. Go on, tell us why we, hello, should, why we should go hello, to plug. a four in the last in the last thirty seconds. Brilliant. Uh, I can't, probably can't even remember what the name of my session is, but <laughs> it, I, I I am hosting a panel of uh, of people to talk about how we can collaborate on uh, how we can build uh, well, like how we can incubate a healthy collaborative accessibility community in local Gov Drupal. Uh, so we've got um. Mike Gifford, who is uh, one of Drupal Core's accessibility leads, um, very experienced uh, accessibility professional and open source champion, uh, has agreed to come and talk. And also our very own Ryan and um, Nova from uh, Nova's from Luton, Ryan's from Hammersmith and Fulham, both of whom are accessibility champions within their councils. So we're going to be talking about um, basically, you know, all sorts of ways we can we can build um, accessibility communities, hopefully within our within our own councils and also within the project itself, to to make the product and the community as accessible as it can be. Absolutely brilliant! Thank you, Maria, and thanks again, everyone, for coming. And see you later in the week. Thanks very much. Bye bye. Bye.